Hi, I'm Jillian from the Center for Academic Communication, and this is Sentence Problems. First, you need a basic knowledge of the different types of sentences in English and how phrases and clauses work. If you need a reminder, check out our resource on sentence types. There are three main sentence problems, run-on sentences, comma slice errors, and sentence fragments. Today, we'll look at these as well as a few common punctuation problems. Run-on sentences occur when multiple clauses are incorrectly joined, usually without enough punctuation. In the sample run-on sentence, here now all the verbs are read and their subjects are underlined. This tells me there are about 10 clauses in the sentence. In order to avoid run-ons, try to limit the number of independent clauses in each sentence to just one or two. A comma splice error is another type of run-on sentence. Here, there are two independent clauses, or complete sentences, joined together with just a comma. While this is acceptable structure in many languages, it's not considered grammatically correct in English. There are three ways to correct this issue. First, you can end the first sentence and start a new one. As we learned in strong sentences, the average sentence length for academic writing is under 25 words. If your splice sentence is much longer than that, then splitting it into two sentences might be a good option. Don't forget to include a conjunctive adverb like however or therefore if you need to show how your ideas are connected. Second, use a semicolon. If the ideas in the sentence are closely related and both parts aren't too long, this can be a good option. Use them sparingly though. If you have more than one or two per paragraph, your writing can start to get a bit messy looking. Third, use a coordinating conjunction. There are seven in total, but the most common ones are and, but, and so. You can use and for adding another thought that is of equal weight as the first. Use but to state a contrast, and use so to show a reason. Using a conjunction is a good option when your sentences are fairly short and don't already contain multiple clauses. Finally, sentence fragments occur either when a sentence does not contain both a subject and a verb, or when a dependent clause is not supported by an independent clause. As you might have guessed, punctuation plays a huge role in good writing, but many writers struggle with using it correctly. Semicolons and colons often cause trouble. Semicolons have two uses. They separate long items in a list, which we won't look at today, and they join two closely related independent clauses. Do not use one to introduce a list. That's the colon's job. Colons in sentences really only have one use. They introduce a list or other additional explanation, definition, or evidence that comes after an independent clause. First, ask yourself, is what comes before the colon a complete sentence? In the first example, it is. Then think of your colon as the question, what are they, or what is it? Does whatever comes after the colon answer this question? If so, this is probably a good use of a colon. In the second example, we can see the sentence, the reason for Juliet's suicide is clear, and ask, what's the reason, what is it? to get the answer. This is how colons work. Finally, there are a lot of problems that can be caused by just a tiny comma, and the comma slice is just one of them. Check out our additional resource on comma use for more information. Okay, that wraps up sentence problems. I hope you've learned a few tricks for avoiding run-ons, comma slices, and fragments, as well as a couple of punctuation issues. Thanks for watching. To learn more tips and tricks to help improve your academic communication skills, Visit the University of Victoria Centre for Academic Communication website for workshops and other resources. You can also book an appointment with one of our tutors by clicking the link in the description below. Good luck, and see you soon!